Let's see. <coughs> what do we need to do today? Well, it wouldn't hurt to knock down some trees. And my tree farm seems to have grown completely at this point. Whoops. Gotta love that silk touch axe. It uh, grabs leaves for ya. That's for sure. Oops, again. You dig too much with the axe and you get the leaves. And I don't really need the leaves, honestly. Like, that's the thing. I don't really need the leaves. Like, it might not be bad... To get some leaf for, you know, builds to make some shrubs and such, bushes. But I don't really need them right now. They're kind of just useless at the moment. Like, I'm sure I could find uses for it. You know? But not for anything I'm currently building, is what I'm saying. And it's not like it would be hard to take either Silk Touch Axe or Shears to Leaf later, you know. I planted a lot of tree, I'm realizing. <laughs> I mean, I basically planted one of everything, so it kind of do make sense. Or not like, like many of everything, rather. Not even just one. Planted like... I think I planted eight or so, 12. I think it was 12. You planted 12 of everything. going to try and utilize that to get up to that block, but that's not going to work. And of course, it was just one extra block. Oh, good. Giant oak tree over here. 
I love to see it. I really don't. <laughs> I kind of hate it when you get these giant freaking oak trees. They have all these like winding logs everywhere. <coughs> Tis the joy of oak tree, though. There's every chance that they grow into these freaking massive trees like this. <sighs> Still need to find out what, like, system people use. I'm, I'm sure it's Streamlabs in some way. For, like, posting, like, the chat. Like, into the video. Because I suppose I could just, like, screen cap the chat. That is one th that is what I used to do, was to screen cap the chat. Whoops. Ah, you frick. So many leaves. Modern, or not modern, vanilla Minecraft had fast leaf decay. Oh, it's one of those things that I don't understand why they don't implement as just a feature. Like, is anybody really that concerned about, oh, my leaves might decay too fast? No. Like, if you want leaves, you grab them before you knock down the tree, you know? Oh my gosh. Freaking tree is so big. Still wasn't at the top. I, mean, I guess the slower leaf decay does help a little here because it's like, hey, I can stand on the leaves. But also, like, it would tell me if there were things that I still need to break, you know? Because the leaves would decay rapidly.
think I got them all. Like here, because the leaves break, like decay so slowly, I have to like hand break leaf after leaf in order just to see if there's branches. If there are quick leaf decay, like I would know that this was the only thing left because the leaves would all be centered around here and everything else would have been gone. Ow. I just broke my legs. <laughs> I got to say, Minecraft Steve is pretty durable. Or Alex, or, you know, insert name of Minecraft character here. Because they're all just the same. It's just their skins are different. Or, and here's another idea, um, instead of making leaves decay faster, implement a tool that when it breaks the logs, also breaks the leaves. You know, a lumber axe as opposed to just like an axe. Something that fell, that you can use to like fell the whole tree at once. Thus allowing you to not only get all of the logs at once, but also to break the leaves and things. Just so that you don't have constant floating leaves that you just, you're waiting for them to decay and they'll slowly decay and drop freaking saplings and stuff. And eventually you'll get the saplings, so, you know, assuming that the leaves decay quick enough that the items don't deep despawn, you know. Like where's my dark oak saplings? <laughs> like they planted what three dark oak trees? Gotten three saplings out of it. Nine saplings. There were several that were like bunched up, I guess. I've got nine saplings and it cost me 12 to put them down. Well, those are all the blocks I can reach. 10. 11, come on, one more and we're even. Just drop one more sapling. One more for an even freaking 12, 
12 for 12. Hey, now we're even. Cool. I don't know why jungle and dark oak trees are like, have like such a rare drop rate for saplings. Speaking of trees, we do still need to find some spruce. I don't think we have spruce yet. Hey, this sapling was finally able to grow. Awesome. <coughs> Um, well, that's everything except for the jungle trees, and those are a pain to cut down. I saw that sapling, and I wanted it. Uh, excuse me. That gives me 14 dark oak saplings, which is not necessarily bad. <gasps> um, let's see, oak log... And birch log, spruce log, which we don't have, jungle log, dark oak, and acacia. Uh, acacia sapling, there they are. And oak sapling, and birch sapling. Cool. At some point, I'm going to have to change that system because there's no way I'm going to fit log, wood, and sapling in there if, if I keep growing them at this rate. You know, into just like one barrel. So, I'm going to have to like either create separate barrels Um. And again, this is when something like storage drawers would really help. But we're playing vanilla Minecraft. Because my computer is dumb. Um, but yeah, finding some spruce trees... <clears throat> would be nice. Maybe that's the first thing we'll do is we'll start looking for some spruce trees. Our crops are coming along nicely though. They are sitting here and slowly growing in, which is always good. Um, clearly I did not, you know, do any work after the last stream. Um, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> but I kind of figured that would be the way it went. Um, I rarely play Minecraft when I'm not streaming it. So. Um. I'm just going to keep going this way. I vaguely recall seeing, and this could just, this could be on a different world, but I have a vague recollection of seeing spruce trees at one point and just not like collecting them. But that could have been on my other colony world because remember that this was originally I'm um, going to be a modded series I 
And then it wasn't because my computer couldn't handle like any amount of mods. And it was freaking dumb. It is interesting, though, that um, Silk Touch cannot pick up, like, grass. Like, grass and vines still require shears. So, my kitty cat. <clears throat> my, uh, my cat is not the most cuddly. Um... She'll like hop up onto my lap and she'll like sit there for a minute, but then she'll like leave. She's like, all right, I'm bored. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> so she's not a sit on your lap and then just cuddle forever kind of kitty cat, which is a little disappointing because... I definitely could use a cat like that. But it's fine. Um, I also don't recall if... Like, I don't think we've ever found any cherry or man... Or, yeah, we do have mangrove, but we don't have, like, cherry trees. So, that's another thing, is finding some kind of a cherry, cherry tree biome might be good. Um, well, these are acacia trees, so that's not beneficial at all. Because acacia trees mean warm biome. I need spruce trees, which are cold biome. There is a uh, broken, a uh, ruined portal over here. Have I been here? I don't think so. I think this is just natural funky generation. Yeah, this is just natural generation over here. Um, it's just, you know, funky because that's how Minecraft do be sometimes. Um, um, um. I also don't know the way back at this point. <laughs> I don't remember what our, like, spawn coordinates are. I should probably make a compass. And, like, a lodestone. Hello, Skirx. Gold nuggies. Flint and steel. Projectile. Four. Feather falling four. Unbreaking three. Gold boots. Those aren't bad. That's for sure. I. Freaking magma blocks. Um, there is a pillager outpost right over there. 
Um, I feel like I remember this, though. Because there was a mesa biome, there was a pillager outpost, and I think that's where I got my villagers. Like, I think where I, I think this is where I got my initial villagers. Was like, okay. I, some, something died in the water, and I got experience for it. <laughs> I don't know what. But yes, I definitely do remember coming by here now. Because I definitely remember the pillager outpost, especially. Must steal their pumpkins. I really should, like, get a shield. I want to like deal with these pillagers because I don't have one and they have crossbows. That said, if they're just going to sit there and, you know, not shoot at me, I will gladly freaking pop them in the face with their own crossbow. Excuse you, sir. I mean, I know I'm breaking into your house and all, but. Um, dark oak, iron, goat horn. Really, really don't need the carrots. Like, I have so many carrots at this point. <laughs> Welp. I guess that's the outpost raided. There appears to be... Not much else to see here. And unfortunately, these guys don't ever, like, stop respawning. So I couldn't even, like, conquer the place. Um, alright, well... Since we need to go away from hot biomes, I guess we'll head back this way and we'll see what we find because clearly that direction is warm biomes. And that is not what we want. We're looking for spruce. We are not looking for warm. We're looking for cold. Got to find me a taiga or something like that. That said, don't mind if I... Hop down here. And fortune up a bit of coal. Um, I 
can't really make that many torches. I can make some. I mean, I guess technically this is safe at the moment. <laughs> So this might be a good place to hang until night is over. Ooh, we got some interesting like cave generation here. Hang on. Is that naturally generating dripstone? Ha ha! That is indeed naturally generated dripstone. Now the fun part is figuring out a way to get to it. the dripstone. <laughs> we have discovered a dripstone cavern. Obviously, if I want any of that, I have to go down there. Um, let's see. Let us yeet us that. And then... Oh, this is when quark would be useful. The ability to place blocks below you. Is super helpful. That's one of those things that I... Kind of don't understand why they couldn't make that a basic feature <laughs> just seems like a, a neat little like beneficial thing you know to be able to put blocks under you when you're building maybe they just think that would be too overpowered or something The real question it becomes, what am I going to do with all of this dripstone? <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. You know, we found all this dripstone. You know, we found a dripstone cave. Congrats. But what am I going to do with it all? <clears throat> <clears throat> Like, dripstone is one of those things that's cool, but I really don't know what you would actually use it for. Other than, you know, like, making a lava lake, or, uh, a, you know, infinite lava source or something. Well, grab it anyway. 
I mean, I think there are decorative dripstone blocks. But I don't know. There might not be because freaking, I don't know. Because that's just what Minecraft does. Or rather what Mojang does. They introduce a new block, but then they're like, mm, but it's not going to have any like, you know, stuff, any decorations. <clears throat> not until they decide that they want the decorations. Once they want the decorations, then they'll add them. Like, think of copper blocks and how, like, the only reason copper was even added was because Agnes was like, oh, I want copper so that I can make, like, one of those houses with the copper roofs. And so then Mojang added copper. And I was like, okay. And, like, I do get that Mojang also plays Minecraft, and that's good. But, I don't know. I just can't help but feel like a lot of their decisions lately for what should or should be added is just, like, does do they want it, you know? But they did a Caves and Cliffs update so that they could add more clay to the world so that they could get clay easier. Because Agnes likes to build with bricks. Always wondered why copper was added. Yeah, it was... Well, when they announced... When they announced the addition of copper, it was literally just like Agnes was like, we wanted to add copper because I liked the, I like those houses where they have the copper roofs and like sometimes because they're so old, they're like blue or green or whatever. Whatever, you know, whatever color it actually is. Like, like she, she spent, a, like she did a whole presentation basically talking about like, like basically saying like, look, we will, I wanted this and so we added it. You know, I was like, I, I, I don't mind that you wanted it and that made you want to add it, but like, you know, you, you, you do have to think about other people than just yourselves, you know, like, come on. Well, we got over two stacks of dripstone, so I'm going to call that good. We can work our way back up here, and we got some gold, which is 
mostly useless in vanilla Minecraft, but what can you do? Um, let's see. This is south. So I guess we'll start, oh wait, no. South is towards the hot. <coughs> I need north. So we shall go north. Northeast. I can tell which way we're going because of the coordinates. <coughs> 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 think anyway think we're headed northeast anyway it might be northwest Because our X position is decreasing. <coughs> hmm. Hey, well, we got back to the base. So I'm going to call that a victory at least. And then we'll stop here and deposit... Um, all of the stuff that we picked up while we were out. Now, how much dirt I used, though. I almost used this entire freaking chest's worth of dirt. Um... I almost certainly don't have a spot for, like, dripstone. I'm just kind of shift-clicking everything in to try and, like, put it in there if I can. Um, I don't have any copper. I do have gold in both nuggy and in raw form. Didn't pick up any diamonds or anything like that. Did pick up some coal. Picked up a little iron. Um, I did not pick up any gravel. And that's the other dirt chest. Okay. Um. Hmm. Dark oak. I put the logs in there. Um, but I am definitely going to need. Something to store the dripstone into. So 
So we shall make a chest. And for now, we'll put it over here. And we'll put our drips down into there. I don't, I really don't think I'll need like a double chest worth of stuff for this, but it's fine. Um, I don't need the spider eyes right now. Maybe when the next update comes out and there's armadillos. Maybe at that point, but I'm not worried about it now. I also just have a lot of crap in here. <coughs> like, I think there's like three bows in here. And like, golden armor that's completely useless. And crap like that. Um... Armor stand. Need smooth stone slabs. All right. Which, the annoying thing about smooth stone is that first you have to make regular stone into smooth stone. Wait. So let's start there. Um, let's do this. I'm going to clear out this dirt chest and make it this kind of miscellaneous. Because at this point I have all these like dirt chests over here. So I'm going to move the dirt to these dirt chests. And we'll just kind of make this barrel a miscellaneous, like extra garbage barrel for now. Ouch. I need to finish these houses. <laughs> Feel a little bad. That, like, I have all these houses. Um, I have these backwards, it would seem. Because these are definitely pumpkins growing. But these are melons. So unless somehow these are also pumpkins, I uh, appear to have this a little backwards. So, whoops. It is what it is, I suppose. Um, all right. That did, in fact, give me a bit of wheat. And I think I will not harvest everything. You'll just harvest these two lines using my silk, using my fortune, so that I can get plenty of carrots. 
Definitely way more than I actually need for these pigs. That ought to do it. I should put some mud in here. Because pigs, you know, add to the aesthetic. Just like... And it wouldn't be difficult because it's just, you know, clicking on grass with water bottle. Um, although I wonder, I actually, I wonder if it's grass or if it has to specifically be dirt. I guess that's something I'll have to find out. Because <coughs> it would be nice to have that for just like the aesthetic. You know? I could just create like a little... First off, <coughs> I could create a little like water area. You know? Because I do feel a little bad that they don't have anywhere to like drink water. <laughs> you know? So I could just like Yep, that's definitely what I wanted. Thanks, game. So I could like do this. And I'll have to kind of work around it. All I need is two buckets of water, and then I can create infinite water, so. <laughs> that was slightly annoying. <laughs> that and we go like that and we do that middle bucket and I put it over here grab the middle bucket and I put it over there I grab the middle bucket and then there they've got like a little you know water thing and now we come over here and we do basically the same thing watering hole you could say I will make this one a little bigger because it's for cows <laughs> and they are you know bigger <laughs> you're gonna make this an absolute pain aren't you <laughs> I don't have any wheat. Y'all are going to make this an absolute pain, aren't you? Mm. 
Water. Now I just put that on this side. That should create an infinite water block here, which it do. And there we go. This little watering hole for the cows. Bird. Melon seeds, dandelions. You know, the wandering trader really seemed like he was going to be this cool thing when they implemented him. It was like, oh, look, you know, he can give, like, you know, trades and stuff that you might not have. And then all he gives is, like, Here's flowers, you know, and like seeds and like basic things that you probably have like a thousand of before you even see one of these guys. And like, yeah, every once in a while they have something useful. Like, I've seen them have, like, dripstone and things like that, which I've definitely taken. But, for the most part, they usually just have garbage. Nice. I love using fortune on crops. It's nice. I don't see a lot of people recommend doing that either. It makes me suspect that people are perhaps not aware that you can. If you break crops with fortune... You get more drops. And it's a good thing to do on stuff like nether wart. Um, before I go anywhere, I forget. Did I do paper trades yet? I did some. So let's do some more. Because God knows I could use the Mendy on my pickaxe and shovel. That's it for my paper trades. I could certainly run around and get more paper via, you know, just running around and picking up all the sugar cane around the island. But 
I will deal with that later, methinks. Did get 40 emeralds out of that, though. Emeralds are always nice to have more of. Still haven't found any spruce trees. But I'm working towards that. Let's head this way towards the dark forest. <coughs> While the two are wholly unrelated, there is still a chance that we could find um, spruce in this direction. Of course, this is the fun of a survival challenge, you know, a survival island challenge, is that you never know where anything is going to be. I got to say, though, I do miss the days when you could do Survival Lava Island. Survival Lava Island was a fun challenge. But you can't do that anymore. I think you could only ever have done it on Java to begin with. But Java used to have a customized world feature and you could tell it to replace the oceans with lava and me and my friend mist actually went and did that at one point the whole series is up the entire series is up on youtube of us doing the Lava Island challenge. We had fun. It was certainly an interesting experience when all the rivers and oceans had been entirely replaced with lava instead of water. There's another pillager outpost in this direction. I do see snow, so that to me would insinuate a cold biome. Hey, as it turns out, spruce was right nearby. I didn't need to do all the work I did to find it. It's fine. That said, with my silk touch, I could technically come in here and collect glass. Or not glass, but uh, ice. Could collect the, uh, the ice that's around here. How rude. I ain't causing you any strife. Wee! 
snow. In bedrock, snow falls on you. Hey, LA's How about that. Not that, you know, I have any use for them, but LA's. This is the best. Mist is pretty fond, honestly. I miss like doing recordings and things with her. I don't know if she would be able to do any, like, recordings or anything, though. Because I don't know if she is currently working or not. Like, one of the, one of the many reasons why I haven't like recorded with her not the only reason um was that she was working like she had finally found herself a job which was exciting um and then excuse me sir how are you attacking me that fast with a crossbow. She streams every once in a while. Yeah. She do. And I think part of why she like stopped streaming as regularly as she was was the same reason was she had found herself a like an actual job um and so it was you know uh, a choice between like did she work in a job that would actually you know pay her or did she stream you know in the hopes that money might come in that way and you know the, the the choice of working was what she made and it's a good choice don't get me wrong um you know guaranteed money over maybe possibly one day money but I know that she would prefer to stream. Because that's one, you know, just like me, she enjoys doing that. Bottles of enchanting. Dark oak logs and potatoes. So nothing of too much use. Definitely not worth the amount of HP I lost. Trying to get to the top here. But it is what it is.
Oh, Frank. Well, I did kind of need to come back anyway, so I guess that works. Definitely not the way I would have preferred to make my way back, but I guess it works. What I would def what I would love to do is if I ever manage to get a switch again um she and I did uh fire emblem three houses for a little while and I would love to like go back to that and continue streaming that again. And then, you know, she, if I could get her to join in, you know, playing through that, Again, that would be awesome. <sighs> the annoying part would be that I would have to go through all of the trouble of getting the freaking um, DLC characters again. And that was an absolute pain. Like, I'm more knowledgeable about how to play Fire Emblem now, but good gravy was the DLC, like, painful to get through. And I don't look forward to having to do it again. <laughs> Um, I have a little extra there. Let me just grab like this much. Um, I think it was like 40 or something like that that could go into here. We'll do 50. I'll need a little bit more in that chest. I'm pretty sure this is too much for these, but this is fine. Goal isn't necessarily to like, you know, smelt all of that and be good. Goal is more just to smelt large quantities of items so that then I can pull out those large quantities of items and get big experience. So... All right, get those going again. Ow. And I mean, it's not nearly as much experience as I can get with easy freaking paper trades, but still. And 
the ridiculous part is I basically went through all of this, the smooth stone and all that, just to make a single armor stand. Um, do I have gold leggings? By chance. Don't see any. Do I have a couple pieces of chain? So it might be good to make a second armor stand. But I don't see any gold leggings. And I'm not going to make gold leggings if I happen across a pair of gold leggings. I will add them. And this is definitely not where I'm going to put these natively. <laughs> um, at some point, I will find a better place to to like add the like this will be like a decoration for like the blacksmith or something you know when I make it but this gets you know four pieces of gear because I had two helmets out of my chest so it frees up four slots of chest space at least so that's what matters. Um, here's another set of gold boots. Do have I do technically have a trident. Before I can do anything with it though, I would need to mend it up. Like big time. Um, but speaking of, um, bees, as I had said earlier, I should make another beehive. And then go down and check on my bees. Which I haven't done anything with in quite some time. Nah, <laughs> they're all glitched out. No surprises there. Beehive. Campfire. But yeah, they're all just kind of stuck on the, uh, I think they're getting stuck on like the space here between the campfire and the beehive, but I'm not sure. I didn't bring any shears. Cause like, see, even if I break the can, the uh, the flower, it doesn't help them move. But if I push them out of the way, then they eventually are able to move again. And 
Like, I don't really know of a good way to do this otherwise. Because, like, the campfire's got to be underneath, you know, the, the thing. Like, I guess I could, like, put the campfire one block further down, maybe. That way they have a full block in between. Why am I... I have silk touch on my axe for a reason. <gasps> Why am I making this harder than it needs to be? Now you just get a lot of smoke particle effects going. Maybe that'll help keep them from getting stuck so much. I honestly don't know. I've never done like a big beehive before. I don't know what like good practices are in regards to bee be hives you know don't know what the uh, the smart way of doing things is I do have three more campfires but I'm gonna need a few more than that At some point, I will make like an actual, what, what's it called, apiary? I think is the term for like actual. Like the, the actual name for like where they take care of bees. So much smoke. <laughs> That's ridiculous right there, let me tell you. Um, now, if I was supposed to get three from each of these, I feel like I didn't. Got 12 honeycomb. Good grief. Can we like turn down the smoke particles by chance? Can we turn down any of the particles for that matter? Is there no particle? Is there no particle option? Hammer shake. Like, I don't, I don't think there is a particle option in here. Cause I imagine it would be here. But I don't see it. So I don't think there is a particles option anywhere. So. 
So that's an slightly annoying. Um Yeah. Thought maybe it could even be in the the accessibility, but I guess not. Just that is so many particles. Like that's ridiculous. Oh, that's where my honeycombs went. Okay. They're like glitched into the wall and up, I guess. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, I'm gonna need some logs. Spruce trees have grown. And then I'm gonna need some sticks. Which I feel like I should have somewhere. I can't imagine I've used up all of my sticks already. Here we go, 64 sticks. And then I'm gonna need some coal. Charcoal would also have worked fine. Um, then beehive, I need more wood. And I'm gonna need even more wood. Ooh, I have so much dark oak law, dark oak wood. Cool. That should do it. Now, I do need more bees than what I currently have. If I am to utilize all of this. But, it's fine. Oh, that's where the dandelions came from. Came from there. Um, I mean, I wonder if that would help if they're not pollinating directly in front of the hive. Um, so I need two more beehives, but for that I need six more, uh, honeycomb. Um, also, I wonder if it wouldn't hurt to push the bees back by one block. It's a good thing. That they don't mind being picked up <laughs> when you have the fire underneath them.
Yep, I have beehives that have bees, and I have beehives that have no bees. And bee nest. There we go. Maybe that'll help too. And so I just need to get what? One, two, three, four, five more pieces of dirt, two more campfires, and then four more beehives to fill this up. And some of that I can get, some of that I can't. <laughs> um, I don't have the materials for campfires. Let's use the dark oak because we have plenty of that. I need six of this. I need six stick. And I need two coal. to make the rest of the campfires. Then I need to get some dirt and some of the dandelions. Wherever I put those at, here they are. I think I only needed four more. And I need to go get five more dirts. And I wonder if it would be beneficiary to do trapdoors. Um, I need 15 of these. And then, I think that'll still, like, let the smoke through, but it'll, like, lessen the smoke. Something like that, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Hence why I said I wonder if. <laughs> um, oh, I only need two dandelions here. And the dirt. And then one campfire. And two campfire. That did not help with the particles at all. But it'll guarantee that the bees won't, like, kill themselves. At least. So there's that. Now let's hope spore blossoms don't cause trouble for bees. Because I think that's a neat little aesthetic to have up in the, you know, uh, on the ceiling there. Hey, yeah, they're not that they don't seem to be affected by the spore blossom, which is good. Yep, 
Take more baby bees. Now we have more bees. And hopefully this one block gap around the beehives will prevent them from coming out, pollinating, and then getting stuck. Because <laughs> I think that's what, what was happening, was they were popping out. And then because the flower was directly here, they were like, weren't moving to, you know, go pollinate. And so then they were like popping out like here, partially into this block and pollinating and getting stuck. But that's good. I like that. I think that is a good start. Um, obviously, like I said, I still need four more beehives. Um, five if I want to replace the nest itself, but I'm really not worried about the nest itself. So, and actually, the, the trapdoors have lessened the smoke. Or a mix of, because I mean, because like right here, there's still plenty of smoke. Maybe it's because, like, it's going through a block now here, and so it's the, the smoke isn't, like, building up here underneath this, whereas here it has two blocks to go through, so now the smoke is just building up here, you know? Um, but this does still count as smoke. Like, this still counts as being smoked, I believe. Even if there's no actual smoke, like, rising up. But, like, you can see that there is smoke coming from the campfire. You know, that doesn't have the beehives above it, so... Oh, frick. All right. So that does not count as being smoked, apparently. Also, I just got stung, which definitely means that some of these bees are dead. I don't think all of them are. If they all are, then oops. I will just spawn some new ones in. Because rippity doo da. Um, but also, I guess that would mean that they're not getting smoked somehow. I think these ones are okay, because they haven't... Well, never mind. I do believe they are all dead. Yeah, alright. So the trap doors do actually block the smoke then, apparently. That's interesting. Well, because if they were, if the be beehives were still being smoked, that wouldn't have happened. So that's annoying and unfortunate. So I thought that like allowed you to like have all of this without. It's like, clearly the smoke is, like, rising from the other campfires, so why wouldn't it be counted as rising from the, the, the other ones? So own game mode too creative. I did. So why don't I have the... Oh, I do have... 
Oh, that, well, that's weird. Is this a creative menu? That's weird. Like, that's super weird, man. I think I had eight bees, but I'm not sure. I have eight now. I don't know if I had eight before, but I have eight now. So we're just gonna call that good. Cause I'm not gonna go hunting for more bees because the game decided that doesn't count as smoking. For some reason. Even though very clearly smoke is rising from literally every other freaking campfire that's not on a beehive. But somehow having the beehive and a trap door means that there's no smoke at all. And I don't understand that. I wonder if I had one block in between, if it would work. Like, let's say I put the beehive here instead, right? And, like, I still put the trap door there. So there's still, like, room for smoke to go up. Like, will that actually work? <laughs> Like, I don't know how long it took for it to stop smoking last time. Immediately. Okay. That's what I want to, wanted to know. It was immediate last time. So now these should still be counted as smoking. And I can have trapdoors. I think. <laughs> I mean, I also thought these were counted as being smoked previously, and then they weren't. So, frick me, I guess, if they're not. I don't understand how that works. <laughs> All of these hives have bees in them. <laughs> Not a single one of these stacked. But I think each one of them probably has like one bee in it. So... So the trapdoors don't help at all with the smoke, but it does help with the, uh, the, the stuff there. Does this emit light? It doesn't seem dark in here. Don't remember if I needed Cheers for this or not? Oh, duh, the campfires would emit light. I'm smart. What's emitting light in this room full of campfires? Ugh. 
Hi, 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 Serene, honestly. Gee, I don't know. What could possibly be emitting light in this room that has, you know, light emitting objects in it? Well, that should fix everything at least. Should. If I find out that those bees are not being smoked again, I don't know what to do. Because now there is definitely smoke rising. I just, I want the trap doors so that the bees don't keep killing themselves on the freaking campfires. So... Like, that's the whole point. Oh, you again. Again. Pillager raids. Come here, my main man. Goodbye. <laughs> and they run far enough away that he then despawns. Which I don't know if I've done yet. I'll run to the other side of the island. They'll even take a moment to collect some sugar cane on the way back. I'll be honest though. When that crafter comes out, probably one of the first things I'm going to build. Because if I build an automatic um, sugarcane farm, really the only thing I'm using it for is paper. And so I'll have that automatic sugarcane farm automatically send to a crafter which will then automatically create paper Thus, inevitably making my life easier.
Plenty of sugar cane. Making sure there aren't any drowned. I think I have solved the drowned issue. And all it took was like 400 plus lanterns. I mean, look at the, look at the lanterns that are all over the water here. You know, it took like 400 and some odd lanterns, if not more. I don't even know. I wasn't keeping a like exact count. But I did so many villager trades for these lanterns, man. Like, so many villager trades for these lanterns. Now I have collected all of my sugar cane. So now I'll take that back and I'll craft it into paper. And we'll do some more villager trades. Get some uh, EXP and whatnot for mending, which is still not nearly as powerful as people say it is. Like, yes, it keeps your tools alive, you know, I will not deny that through mending, you can keep your tools. But the truth of the matter is that it requires a lot of trading. I... Apparently, people have not restonked. Which is super annoying. Apparently, the villagers have not been loaded. They have not restonked. There we go. Build your trades. Um, this guy really doesn't have anything to buy. This guy has the bricks and blocks of quartz. Um, this is our toolsmith, who does have a bell, but that's not really what I'm after. I am told that golden carrots are like the best food source in the game. But they're also, like, super expensive. <laughs> like, I could have gotten so much pie for that. Can I have another farmer? Yes, I do. Um, oh, and you don't even have carrots. Okay. 
funny, the guy that I sell carrots to, um, you know, the, the, the guy that I sell carrots to is the guy that I buy, or the, the guy that I sell carrots to is not the guy that sells carrots back, you know? Apparently they do some, like, trading between each other. I don't think it's the tools themselves that are OP, just the ability to keep the enchantments. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> but, I mean, it's not really that big. Like, it's not that OP, considering that you can just buy whatever enchantments you want. So... Even then, I don't really think it's that OP. You know, having the mending. It's like, oh no, my tools broke. And then just immediately buy exactly the same set of enchants. You know? The <laughs> villagers have their own commerce. I mean, it does seem like that, yeah. Because, I mean... I sell carrots to the one guy, and then the other farmer is the one that sells me the carrots back. Just golden, you know. But at least I got my tools re-upped. Which is always a good thing. I don't know. I just don't... I guess I just don't see it. You know, I just don't see, like, mending as being as overpowered as people say. Um, I mean, maybe somebody could give me a good argument for why. You know, why people view it as OP. But... If it's like, well, now you can keep your enchantments. It's like, yeah, but villagers can already, like, make it so that you keep your enchantments, you know? Let's go put roofs on these two houses. People can't keep a stable income. I suppose that's, that, that's probably true. You know? I can definitely see where... Um, like, patience is a little required. In, you know, keeping up on, like, trades and stuff. And it's like, th there's definitely like a, you know, I just want to trade once and be done and not have to worry. When in reality, the idea of villagers is that you are supposed to be like constantly keeping up on trading, you know, if you want you know, stable amounts of money and stuff. And maybe I would, maybe I would also feel differently if I didn't have mending. And like, you know, because like none of my tools have broken, you know, since I got mending, right? But like, maybe if I was trying to do this, 
without mending and I was actually like having to rebuild the tools and things. And it was like, oh, you know, then I have to get the experience, and then I have to get the this, and I have to get the that, you know. Like, maybe I would feel differently. I don't know, it just costs so much experience to mend your tools. And I'm not entirely sure how much experience it is, but it just feels like it takes like as much experience to keep your tools mended as it did just to like keep them enchant you know remake and enchant because it's a lot of experience that's needed for mending You know? Like, I guess that's probably the reason I just don't find it that overpowered is because, like, yes, you know... It does cost mending, you know, it costs experience to mend, but to me it just takes so much experience to mend, you know? Like, I have so much sugarcane growing and so much paper trade. That I can get, you know, plenty of villagers and trades and experience, you know. People are saying that fishing is a good substitute for XP farms. Hmm. That I wouldn't know. I really don't do that much in the way of the fishing in the game because the fishing is really boring. <laughs> Maybe that's the next thing that my that Mojang will update. <laughs> They'll add a whole new fishing mechanic and then everybody will complain <gasps> because it'll be while it'll be more fun, it'll be like <gasps> more complex. <gasps> and for some odd reason, people are like, against complexity, but yet they do redstone, which is complex. I don't know. Or they play mod packs that just make the game like 20 times more complex than it needs to be. And, like, that's another thing. Um, when I was making mod packs, that was something that I was, like, really against in mod packs. You know, in the mod packs that I was making. It was just, like, I'm not going to create these, like, ridiculously complex recipes for, you know, crafting stuff. Um, but it always kind of, like, worked out to my detriment in a way. You know, that I was, like, trying to avoid complex recipes. Because it was, like, if I'm avoiding, like, ridiculous complex recipes, whoops, those were the logs, not the planks. Then the question came, like, you know, what is too complex and, you know, what can I do to ensure I'm not making them too complex and 
honestly, most of the time I found that the the default recipes were just like perfectly fine. And I really didn't want to make the rest the recipes much more complex than they already were. You know? I mean, there were definitely things where I would change it to make it harder. Um, like, you had to do more things in the mod pack to be able to... Um, you know, get certain items. Um, I remember a big one that I did was I made blood magic require stuff that you couldn't even, like, start getting until the very end of the mod pack. Um, you know... And to me, like, that works fine, you know. But it's like, you know, gating stuff progression-wise, but I still just didn't want there to be like, okay, and now go craft, you know, 3,000 of this one item to make one, you know one, you know, obelisk or, you know. I think that the XP orbs go to whatever is in my main hand. I think it goes to the armor first. But after that, it goes to whatever is in, like, my hand. Um, so, like, if I'm holding my pickaxe while I'm doing the trades, it'll go to that. You know? But, I've been watching somebody do, um, it's create, um, like, arcane engineering. And I'm just, like, watching the, uh, the, the design of the pack going, this is way too much. Like, I don't know who designed this pack. But it is, like, there's so much that you have to do just to create, like, one item. So... You're reading it off the internet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't fully understand how mending works myself. Um, I just know that, like, you know, in vanilla, when you do the trades, you usually hold something in your offhand, and that's what gets repaired. And there is no offhand in Bedrock, but I think... Like, I think whatever's in your main hand takes priority. And then if there's nothing in your main hand, then it goes to your off hand. And then from your off hand, then it, like, goes to your armor. And then if none of those, then it goes, like, to you. Because it doesn't, like, go to your... It doesn't, like, search your inventory for anything. Kendrick, here is your reminder from Renee. Kendrick, take out trash. Um, it, like... Kendrick, here is your reminder yeah, from yeah, Renee. stupid Kendrick, thing going trash. off for somebody else. Some people really need that complexity. Yeah, I suppose. And, like, complexity does work. Um, don't get me wrong. You know, 
I, I definitely do think complexity has its place. Um, cause like I've said it before when I'm doing like the World of Warcraft streams, I'm doing like the raids and such where I'm like, this is really boring because the, the mechanics aren't complex like at all. Um, yeah, I, I also know very little about Bedrock Edition, um, as well. Like, I'm learning, the, the most that I know about Bedrock is kind of what I'm learning as I go. If I could play Java and I could play modded, I would much prefer to do that. But, considering that when I tried to do that, my computer almost explodes. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> But it definitely makes sounds that sound like it's going to. Minecraft is too simple already. It is pretty simple. I'm not going to lie. And that is one thing I do like some of these mods that add stuff like the five by five crafting recipes. Um, just cause it does add an extra layer of complexity. Um, but it's not overly complex, but also that extra layer of complexity can benefit. Um, in like the amount of recipes that there are in modded, you know. I find that a lot of mod packs often have issues with like repeat recipes and needing stuff like polymorph um, in order to make, make it so that you can like do all of the recipes, you know. And so I do like the additional 5x5 five five because it allows you to have recipes in the game that are perhaps a little more complex. Um, you know, your, your big, um, you know, crafting items... You know, you're able to make it so that those require a bit more work. And that, because you're doing that, it leaves less space um, for there to be recipes that are, like, duplicated over and over again. You know? But, at the same time, like, people then take that to an extreme. Yeah, you can only have so many crafting rest. And that's the other thing, too. It's not just um, that you, like, have a 3x3 three three crafting recipe, but... How do you make it make sense what you're crafting, you know? And I wonder if Minecraft wouldn't benefit from some of the new, um, like, sandbox games that are similar to Minecraft, where they do away with, like, the crafting table... And instead give you a menu to like choose. And it's like, yes, if you want to craft shears, it's two iron. But also, if you want to craft a sword, it's two iron. And then you don't need a, a crafting shape, you know. You just make sense out of it, out of you need 20 of such an item. 
and then now you've made sense out of it, and you can have 30 recipes that are all the same, you know, but it doesn't break it. It doesn't feel like, how does this make sense? You know, I wonder if Minecraft wouldn't benefit from a system like that where they don't then don't need a shaped crafting, you know, and multiple recipes can be the same thing, but you can still make multiple items, you know. But also that's changing a very like core fundamental aspect of Minecraft and like how many people are, would even be okay with, you know, such a fundamental change to the system. Like it may not even matter whether it's a benefit or not if people are going to get in an uproar because you changed the fundamental aspect, you know? What? My freaking mouse bugged out. Whoopsie. Or not whoopsie. That was the right pickaxe. I thought I was using my fortune pick, but then I wasn't. So I switched and ended up accidentally using the wrong pick. <laughs> I don't know. It would definitely be an interesting exercise to, like, try. Um, you know, definitely something that I think that if they released it in a snapshot, it would be fun to see how the community reacts. Um, obviously, they would have to release it via, you know, a test to see how people react to it before they decide, like, yeah, no, this sounds like a great plan to do. Um, but I don't know. It could be interesting. But I definitely remember when I was making a mod pack. Um, I was like, all right, I'm going to make one of those, you know, grindy mod packs. One of those complex mod packs. And then, like, by the time I got through, like, the first section of the mod pack first chapter of like making it. I was just like, I hate everything about this. And then I stopped because I, if I'm not going to enjoy it, you know, I don't want to make it. Like why make, why make something that I, even I won't enjoy, you know, 56 cobble. 7, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Cool. I just wanted to get a full stack of the cobblestone there. Just because I had accidentally goofed and started doing that. And then that gives me, you know, a full stack of stone that I can now carry. Well, cobblestone, but still. You know, it gives me an entire stack of cobblestone that I'm then able to just to carry without it, like, being annoying. <laughs> I 
But this island is looking a lot better now that I've done a lot of this flattening. You know, it's definitely coming together pretty well. That said, I've been debating the idea of building a castle instead of a town hall. Um, cause I, I think I like the idea of a castle better. Um, but if I'm going to build a castle... And if I'm still going to have it like up on this hill, I'm actually going to need to expand the hill because it's actually not big enough for what I, for, for the, uh, the size of the castle. So. Um, that said, I wonder if it wouldn't be good to try laying out sort of the basics to the castle to begin with. Gosh dang it, it's always the last one. <laughs> um, let me see here. Um, I want to build, I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at building things, um, but a lot of people have really nice, like, free schematics out there. Um, and so I'm curious to see if I can find a, a, a real, like a really good one that I like. Um, I did find a few that I really liked a while ago, but I don't know where those are. Are anymore. So I'm kind of looking to see if I can find any. <laughs> um that's interesting, but that doesn't help me. <laughs> um sorry, I found a website. Um, that was like, this is a Minecraft construction, like, wiki. And I was like, oh, that sounds neat. And I clicked on it, and 
there's not literally nothing on the wiki. I'm just like, good. Very good. Like, that's super helpful. I can definitely build your entire project from literally nothing. <laughs> like, I'm on here looking for stuff, <laughs> you know? Um, there's a lot, there are a lot of castles that look really cool out there. Um, but none of these have, like, how-tos. They're just like, look at my castle. I'm like, cool. How-to, though. It's like, nope, not going to tell you. I'm like, thanks. Like, I, I would like to know how to, though. Do, 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 do. I realize that this is probably really boring because nothing is going on. <laughs> and so I apologize for that. I'm just trying to find something here. Hey, I found something. Now I just need to uh, save it to my computer. There we go. Um, so this is very big. So it is going to be interesting to build. Um, this is designed by a guy who goes by the name of Colt Coyote. Um, that is so big. How big is that? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Oh boy! Three, four, five, six, seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 58 blocks wide, if I'm reading the, mat the schematic correctly. Um, so let's say I want to build it here on top of the hill, right? 
So like I want it up here. Um, we'll start it here. And we'll start here. And I can all, like, I already do know that this isn't going to be a big enough space. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 9, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So 44 blocks here. So I need 58. Um, so 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 extra blocks. On this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the width of it, I think. <laughs> um, the only real way to be fully sure, and you know, to ensure that I'm not miscalculating anything is to try to construct the building it's like itself one two three and so then here and this is one two three four five six seven eight nine three four five six seven eight nine and then it comes up by two blocks to here and then it is Two blocks and then three blocks. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. Two blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's one, two, three, four blocks. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks further. Six, seven. And then it's another four blocks. Followed by another seven blocks. Followed by two blocks. And then it goes like this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three,
And that's not enough. <laughs> I think I goofed somewhere. Not entirely sure where I goofed at either. One, two, three. Because then they one, two, three. Oh, I see where I goofed at. I goofed. Technically, I goofed back here. Because this is the starting block. Got it. So on this side, the starting block would also be on this side. So then from here, it would be one, two, three, and that would be two blocks out, like that. So this should be where I need the hill. Like this, is, this is the extent that I need the hill to be, if I did everything correctly. <laughs> so... Which I could have done everything completely wrong, but I won't know until later. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I can already see that these do not line up. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine. Nine is counting this block. And I think I didn't do that. I think I built out two and then I like built out there. You guys will find out. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I am on the schematic. So. Oops, scroll too far. And then this is a five block wide. Or no, over here it's five block wide. Well, this is also one, two, four, five. And this is two block. Do you mind? <laughs> Freaking chickens, man. So this is two blocks, and then it needs to be out to here. And then it's two blocks. And then from here, it needs to start going outward several blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then here, I need one more block. And then it goes one, 
two, and three. And then, is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oops. And then one, two, and three. Then from this block, one, two, three, and four. And then here, one, two, and three. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's literally just repeat the pattern on the opposite side. So one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four upwards from here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was eight. Right? Stop over scrolling. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, and then block. It goes that way. And build it out to here. And then two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four. Uh, hang on. I think that's right. Two, three, four, five over there. Yes, so this is a full rotation. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. Two, three, four, five. By two blocks. One, two, and three. And then, yep, two blocks here. Hey, we got it right. Nice. We did indeed get it correctly. Awesome. Very awesome. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
and then one, two, three. I'm out of cobblestone. Rip. Um, why did my helmet come, fall off? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Freaking helmet was off. I don't know why. That was very strange. Cool, I am mining cobblestone, good. The second there, I thought I was on the wrong pick. <laughs> Cause I want cobblestone at the moment. I'm laying out this thing. So, this is five, right? Yes, the walls are five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, no. Excuse me. It's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, five. It's like that. And then it's one, two, three, four. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it is two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is the entire structure. Sort of. <laughs> so now what I have to do <laughs> is start from here using dirt and go outward like so. And I need to attach this dirt here. Because this is this dirt is the outer dirt. So like that. No, there are no blocks there. Not here either. I am out of dirt blocks. <laughs> So rip that. Um, I mean, this whole back area can be just lifted up at this point. Like all of this can be dug. There are no blocks back here. I mean, technically there are, but Like, cause what? Cause it's a moat, right? So like, water blocks are back here. Okay. I think that pretty much lights everything up around here. I just know that like I broke a few torches 
to like place these blocks down. So I'm just trying to make sure that things are still lit up. Cause I don't want no mobs in my castle. Ain't no mobs in my castle. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Hi there, kitty cat. Okay, so see, I thought this was part of one of the lines, but I forgot I had to push the whole thing back by one. So actually, I need to fill in this line here that I dug earlier, which I figured would happen, but, you know. I needed a, I needed some way to measure. <laughs> cool. Break this block. And I can fill that in. I actually don't want that to fill that block in. I'll make it easier for me later. Come on. the layout I need for here. Drop a torch over here so that we're sure no mobs can spawn. And that is. Whoops. Oh, hang on. Still have another line of dirt to place. And I'm out of dirt again. <laughs> uh, actually, this dirt kind of is probably going to be used. It's fine. I can just rework it. 
actually, this dirt needs to be removed. I actually have to replace some of the dirt, <laughs> come to think of it. All right, just like that. So now, what I need to do is, I need to come up here and build outward, like so, and then I need to come down here. And build outward. Right here, if I'm right. out two blocks, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, uh, hmm. Did I not do that right? Oh, wait, did I do this too long? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What did I do wrong here? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wait, did I goof on? No, this should match. Oh, yeah, duh. I didn't freaking. Duh. See what I did wrong. It's supposed to be three blocks from the moat. All right. Definitely going to knock all this down. So I might as well mine it for the cobblestone that I currently need to figure out the rest of this. <laughs> um... And then, so this needs to be this, which would then be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now it's three away. Got it. Okie dokie. I need more cobblestone. <laughs> The fun part is going to be replacing all of the cobblestone. 
because it's not cobblestone that I actually need. I'm just using the cobblestone to lay out the ground itself. You know, lay out the outline of the whole thing, if you will. One, two blocks there. And then this has got to come out here. And connect here. Cool. There we go. Very cool. And this is not dirt. It needs to be wood because that's a bridge. Now we'll set it out and hopefully it's a for a few days it'll dry and we can keep mining up this stuff do 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 But soon we will have the basics of the, well, the basic layout for our castle. And then we can start the actual, like, construction process. <laughs> And that will be nice. We can build ourselves a nice big castle. Do, 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 do. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Coolies, coolies. It do appear that we have constructed it correctly. I am just running out of cobblestone again. <laughs> Which is not technically a problem. Because, I mean, there's plenty to mine. And I definitely have cobblestone back at the house. It's just a matter of getting it into my inventory at the moment, you know? So.
All right. Hopefully that is, hopefully that's good. <laughs> um, so let's see. So I need to fill in all of the graphs on this side of the wall. Hoping that this is enough light. Um, oops, hang on. I didn't, I only built this one block out. I didn't build this three blocks out. So let me fix that. Um, and why does my helmet keep coming off? What the heck? <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Or, no, I want, I want this here. It's this I need to mine. So I do have to move my trees, which I mean, I already knew I would have to, because I was building into the trees to begin with. And like, I knew that the, one of the main things I was gonna have to do was move these trees, you know? So it's not like it's a big deal. Um, so this actually I need to fill in. Because this is on this side of the wall. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Um, well, let's start with the trees then. Surely there is a set of vines that goes to the top. There always is. And we mine our way down. Or if we chop our way down, I suppose. However you want to view it. And further down we go. And now it's just straight down to the ground. Take care of all the branches. Yeah. 
And to the floor. Coolies. All right. So that's one tree down. <laughs> now we just got to keep an eye out for it to drop saplings as we continue. And apparently extra wood that I must have missed. That was like hanging on brand like leaves or something. we go again Now we go back down. <coughs> I don't know if anybody is watching at the moment, but uh, if you're still watching, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm just sitting here knocking down, you know, the, the, this tree here, these trees here. I, like, I, but I slightly dislike jungle trees because they're so big. But also, I like jungle trees because they're so big. <laughs> you know? I think if they were more like spruce trees, the, the really big like spruce trees, I would probably dislike them more because they wouldn't have a way of like climbing up and working down, you know, because they wouldn't have vines. Um, but I think that I think I like these trees a little bit more than the giant spruce trees simply because they have vines to climb up so that you can like usually start at the top and work your way down. Um, that's not always the case though. Like right here, I need to climb up, but I can already see that these vines don't go I go most of the way up actually. I don't think there's much further up actually. This might be the top right here, even. It is, okay. So actually, never mind, that one did go all the way up too. Sometimes they don't, and it can be kind of a pain. But it looks like everything worked out fine here to get to the top. Doop and doop. Should be the only, whoops, brand, only uh, leaves. I want, I've been watching like way too much IBX Toy Cat. Because <laughs> he calls them leafs. And like that, that has entered my vocabulary is calling them leaves instead of leaves. I 
Such is the fun of watching YouTubers from entirely different countries, I suppose. It's fun watching them pronounce things differently. Sometimes they even have entirely different words for things. There's one YouTuber, I don't watch them, um, but I see their shorts quite regularly. Um, and they like to do shorts about like, why does America call something one thing, but the British call it another thing? And it's really fun, some of the shorts that he posts that I go, that is a neat little, like, extra nugget of knowledge, you know? Like, in, Brit in British English, the hood of a car is called the bonnet. And American English, it is the hood. And he went through why it, you know, each one is called what they are. And it's like, yes, in Britain, they call it the bonnet because the first cars had a bonnet shaped hood, you know. The, the, the place where the engine is, is bonnet shaped. Um, but in America, the term hood came about because we, we in America thought it looked more hood like as opposed to bonnet like. And so in Britain, it became the bonnet, but in America, it became the hood. And I was just like, that's really interesting. Of course, he goes more in detail about everything than I did, but it's still pretty, you know, still some pretty neat little, like, history nuggets. You know, lore nuggets. Maybe that's what we need to do. Instead of calling it history, we should call it lore. And then people will be like, oh, it's the lore of. And then people like will be interested in history. <laughs> Because, you know, there's all, like, the, the, the whole, like, you know, gotta find the lore of, you know, FNAF or the lore of Minecraft. And, you know, like, people are interested in basically the history, right? But it's not history, it's lore. So if we started calling it lore, would we get, like, a bunch of people, you know? <laughs> Did you fall asleep or something? Did me shouting lore wake you up? Because that would be hilarious. Skerox says that they are up again. They've been silent for a while and now they're up again. So I'm assuming that they like fell asleep or something. <laughs> yes, he says, rip. That can happen. Especially when, like, I'm pretty quiet because I'm, like, focused. You know? I was kind of focusing pretty heavily on, like, did I get all of the logs on that, on those jungle trees? But now that I'm just kind of digging without much regard... I can kind of 
kind of focus more, you know, on talking. But yeah, I, I do wonder if, you know, like, I, I do kind of legitimately wonder, like, you know, like, would, would history be more popular if it was presented in a, a and honestly, like, I really do think this might be a thing. Um, but if we presented history in a, a more mysterious, like, ooh, you know, maybe we should learn about this. Maybe we should figure it out way. As opposed to in 1989, there was someone that was born. And that someone was someone, and like that that someone went on to do something, and you know it's the 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 the, the this history, and you know I wonder, and I wonder if that's also not just like, school in general would be more appealing um, if it were taught differently. Um, I mean, I know that growing up myself, I was homeschooled. Um, and, but I definitely remember some of the classes being more engaging simply because... It was, you know, it, I wasn't having something just like talked at me or things like that in some of the classes. Um, but instead it was like presented in a different way, you know. And I wonder if maybe that's some of the issue just in general is, you know, our current society doesn't present in a way that is indicative of interest, you know, and when you don't present in a way that's indicative of interest, that just causes issues, you know, people don't learn and want to learn and whatnot, so... I mean, it's like you watch YouTube videos and like there's entire YouTube video, you know, YouTubers that basically will teach you the same things that you would learn in like a classroom, but the way that they present it and the way that they do it makes it more interesting than the way that it's presented and done in like a classroom, you know? Like, I would much rather learn about the the properties of, you know, nuclear fusion and, you know, what nuclear power does for us and how beneficial and, like, clean of an energy it is, you know, from a YouTuber... <laughs> that can present it in a fun, interesting way over some boring old guy just sitting there going, well, you know, here's the fact about nuclear power. Nuclear power, you know. And, like, that's one thing I like about Kyle Hill 
is that he does a really good job, in my opinion, of talking about sciencey things in a way that's fun and interesting. You know? Because, like, he... Uh, one, one of the things that I like is that he presents it as, like, a TV show, you know? It's like, he's the... He, he's an evil... You know, sci you know, he, he's a mad, not evil, but he's like, he's a mad scientist that's like trying to take over the world, you know, and then he presents to you the facts of the world, you know, in that way. And it's just like, yo, that's cool. Um... I just can't help but wonder, like, maybe we just, you know, maybe it's not that so many people are dumb, you know, and we need to, like, stop encouraging this idea that people are just dumb, and maybe it's just that we aren't teaching properly in a way that interests like the current generation you know and we need to take that into consideration in my opinion why do i always get into these like super deep conversations in minecraft i find that so funny whenever i do these minecraft either episodes or streams somehow they become like deep conversations You know, like I can picture like playing with somebody like Sparkles or something and then being like not wanting to like engage because like, you know, I'm getting political or talking about like, hey, this is bad in our world. We need to, you know, do something about it, you know. And like, but like, yet that's what I always do. <laughs> so, you love the Minecraft streams. It's like a podcast. That's that. That's a good way to think about it, I suppose. I do enjoy, you know, talking about stuff. And like the world, you know, I have a lot of opinions. It's true that, yeah, I don't know how many of them are correct, but I have a lot of opinions. I do generally try to research my opinions out beforehand. Um, or if I'm not doing like research, I'm pulling from, like, my personal experiences, you know? And I'm just trying to light things up mostly. I'm not really worrying about where the torches are versus like where they're going to be. You know, when everything is said and done. Um, because right now my main focus is just... Because like these are the walls, so... Like, as soon as I place a block on any of these, all these torches are going to have to move. Um, you know. Ooh, is it storming out all of a sudden? Is 
sounds like it's storming outside. Yeah, and that's the, that's the other thing, too, as you pointed out. It is opinion, you know. A lot of the things that I say and think, like, it is opinion, you know. And I always, and I do realize that, um, you know, some people don't realize that I'm trying to, you know, speak purely from a stance of opinion. Um, I, I have had that many times where, you know, I'm sitting here like talking and somebody is like disagreeing with me and like they're arguing as if I'm arguing for like fact and it's like, no, like this, this is, this is opinion, you know, my opinion is that dragon riding in World of Warcraft is terrible because it's really not designed well, you know, it's not designed around the idea of you're riding a dragon, you know, and it's like, yeah, but, like, I like it. And, you know, somebody's like, but I like it. That That's fine, you know? You you absolutely like it. I, I have no problems with people liking these things. And yet, like, it, it, uh, it's just, it's so funny when, I, like, I'll even say that. I'm like, I really, like, it's perfectly fine if you don't like the same thing. You know, or or if you like the thing that I dislike, and then it's like, well, you're talking as if it like your opinion is like the right one. I'm like, I, this is how I talk. I don't know how. You know, I I don't. That 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 is not my goal. You know, my goal is not that this is the correct. You know, opinions are opinions. They, they, they cannot be right or wrong because they're opinions, <laughs> you know. Now, your opinion could be based on factually incorrect things, you know. But that doesn't you know, negate your opinion or mean it's wrong. And I've definitely seen a lot of people um, where I'll be like, look, you know, it's, it's an opinion, you know, it's not like nobody is right or wrong, <laughs> you know, but then they'll be like, oh, you can have the, you're, you're, you're completely right that you can have your opinion. But your opinion is just factually wrong. I'm like, oh. But that's not how opinions work. Opinions are not factual. They cannot be factually wrong. They can be based on factually incorrect information. But an opinion itself cannot be factually wrong because it's not factual. You know? Like, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, and we're both right. <laughs> That's the way it is. That's the way opinions work. We're both correct. But, yeah, I mean, it is, it is what it is, so. Um, all right. <sighs> So really the only thing that I have left to do for this castle, aside from building the actual castle, um, 
you know, if I'm, if right now all I'm doing is going in and like outlining it, right? Then the only thing left that I have to do is to mine three blocks down in this outer portion. A freaking scroll wheel. Sometimes it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. I don't know why. But I have to take this and mine three blocks downward. So I think that will be my next step is I will start digging this out, pushing it down three blocks. And in doing so, I will start working to repair some of the, like the, the gaps, like right here, for example. Okay, there are these giant holes caused by the natural hill that is here. Like that. Oops. And so this is a moat. Which is probably going to be one of the more annoying things to actually get to work. Because while I am sitting here you know, mining down, I'm eventually going to have to fill the whole thing with water. And that could get troublesome pretty quickly. Boop, 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 boop. Blocks there, and some blocks over here. And since this is not moat over here, I need to bring the ground up to match the wall. And I am out of dirt again. Oops. Waste not. Why? There is a big cave under here. <laughs> As it turns out. That was interesting. Now, I believe that this is the correct block. But if not, I'll just redig that out. It's not that big a deal, you know? But once I get the walls up on the castle, um, I could move the villagers into there. 
to kind of get them out of that like cramped tiny little area. I could move the uh, the villagers into the castle for a little while. Um, all right. Well, I mean that's fine, I suppose. <laughs> I need a drink. I will grab one once I'm done mining this line. Well, it wasn't so much that I said it could be dangerous. I was saying it could be problematic. You know, more like annoying because I have to like, you know, put down, you know, dig it out and put down the water and, you know, deal with all that. But I definitely did not expect a very sudden drop like that. So... Just straight down into a freaking cavern. It was like, okay, thanks for that game. Well, now I should have enough dirt to fill in that area that I was needing to fill in. And I'll do this line right quick. And what I think I will do, um, because, you know, if I'm digging three blocks down, I'm going to need a way to get up, right? <laughs> if I'm digging three blocks down, I'm going to need a way to get back up. Um... So, what I think I will do in that regard, excuse me, is here on the back side, I'm going to leave like blocks that will let me like get back up. And once I start like adding the water, basically, I'll, you know, yeet us those blocks. And then I can just like hop right up to where I need to get to. And so, you know, while I'm down here, I can just jump right up and climb out of here. So I'll probably like over here on this corner, probably like just leave one block like this. And then. I can hop up here from there, and then as I do more of this, I'll leave more of that open. So, although I do seem to be not down far enough over here, because this is the block that I need all of this to be attached to. Uh, all of this. I mean, thanks for the vines, because it did let me get back up, but also frick these vines. Seriously. But yes, yeah, so this block here, this level, is where I need to be building at. Mm -hmm. 
because this is how deep down the moat is going to actually go. Also, I think my mom is watching Willy Wonka. Not sure if any of it is like audible through the microphone, but I just started hearing the oompa loompa doompa dee doo. I was like, wow, Willy Wonka, man. That movie gave me nightmares as a kid. Let me tell you, like, legitimate nightmares. <laughs> like, the main thing was um, the scene where, I don't remember what the kid's name is, the like, the main character, but, like, he drinks the thing that, like, makes him into a balloon. And he, like, floats up towards the fan. But, like, I had nightmares about him, like, going up and hitting the freaking fan. And, like, you know, getting chopped to horrible, gory bits. Um, like, that one and the, uh, the, the blueberry girl. When she, like, ex, you know, gets turned into the massive, like, blueberry. Um, like, I, 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 w I was terrified of that part. Because I kept, like, imagining, you know, what if they don't get her you know, save her in time, and she expands, you know, because they tell you, like, you know, we've got to squeeze her, uh, you know, otherwise she's going to expand too much, and then she'll pop like a balloon. Uh, just nightmares of, like, that happening, you know? That movie gave me, like, legitimate nightmares. So... But then I was one of those kids that did very easily get nightmares from, like, movies, so. I realize, you know, I don't think many kids have that issue nowadays, just because, like, everything they do, you know, is, like, terrifying nowadays. They play freaking... I'm not condoning it, but I know that freaking kids nowadays, like, they'll be, you know, seven, eight years old playing M-rated games. I'm not condoning that behavior, but it's not, it's, it's not a truth you can escape either, you know? Like, that's what happens. You know, doesn't make it good or right, but it is what happens, so. Um, my inventory appears to be full of a lot of dirt, in fact. So that's fun, because I can't pick up this cobblestone. Um, but I can pick up the cobblestone if I place this one torch. Which I guess I'll do right there. Then I can actually pick up the cobblestone. <laughs> I probably should dump the cobblestone from my inventory. Since that's mostly what I'm getting. And the dirt is what, like, I'm, you know, needing to place the dirt. So, like, that's why I don't want to get rid of the dirt from my inventory. 
but like the the co the the cobblestone is what I'm like removing from all of this, you know. So that's like I can probably eat us all of that from my inventory and be fine. And my inventory is full again, but it won't be in a minute because I'm placing down these dirts. But yeah, I have more. That there's more cobblestone in my inventory than there is dirt, and I'm not replacing it fast enough for it to matter. So let's hop up and out. Um, of course, there's mobs. I was trying so hard to avoid that but there are mobs I mean it is dark in that spot so it makes sense I was just I was really trying to like stay close enough that it wouldn't put mobs down because they they they, they only spawn you know a certain like distance away from you so I was trying to stay close enough that they wouldn't um, but unfortunately that is not happening oh my goodness I have so much jungle log <laughs> look at that I have so much jungle log <laughs> that's ridiculous right there Well, let's sleep. And we'll trade in about half of this dirt. Because I don't... Because, like, I'm still collecting dirt. So, I don't think I need all of that dirt to begin with. Um, like, I probably need that much dirt, but I'm not gonna, you know, because I'm gonna get more, I might not need, like, that amount. I don't know if that makes sense. All right, so now we're going to come running back over here, and we're going to place some torches right in the middle here, so that no mobs can spawn. Let's do it in like a pattern. Like, I'm pretty sure if I just put torches on, like, every corner, that it'll be enough to light everything up. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll do it like this. Where I'm like lighting up in a line. And then here, because the line is here, then I go boop there, boop there, boop there. Um, oh, and there's 
technically supposed to be torches here in line with the, those torches. These are probably a little excessive, but it's fine. And then that lines up there, that lines up there, that lines up there, that lines up there. It all lines up in the end, you know? And hopefully that creates enough light everywhere that there will be no mob spawning. They're putting torches on every corner in the center of the larger rooms like this. And then like lining all of these torches up in this way, like over here. Put one there, put one there, put one there, put one there, put one here. There, there, corner, corner, directly in the center, corner, corner, here, here, something around, somewhere around here. <laughs> Oops, this is actually off. I lined that up with the wrong torch. Here and here. And then I would want this torch to be in line here or something to that degree. But yeah, that's probably enough light. I mean, this area might be a little dark. I guess we'll see when night comes, like this area. This is definitely lit up. The, like, this section here is definitely lit up, though. So. Gunpowder. Which, if I had any kind of elytra, would probably be nice. But I don't have an elytra. So it's not really the most useful to me. You know, here I am, you know, I'm like, gunpowder, great. That really doesn't help me any. And then people would immediately just be like, serene elytra. I don't have an elytra. Like, I'm not throwing it out. I'm going to keep it for when I do get an elytra. But, like, it's not useful to me right now is all. And even then, like, I don't know, I, elytras were added in, what, 1.11? And to this day, I think I've only really used them, like, once or twice, just in general. So I just don't really use them in standard gameplay at all. But then I'm also just not, like... I mean, you can see how much of these streams has been me sitting here at my base as opposed to going out, you know? Like, I just don't explore a lot. You know, I don't go out into the world just because in regular Minecraft, there just is not much to explore, you know? Like, maybe once the trial chambers come in and neck the next update, but I think they just need to like, like I, I always add so many like structure generation mods when I make a mod pack because I just think that that's what Minecraft needs is more structure generation, you know? One, two, oh wait, one, two, three. This, one, two, three. This is the lowest level. I don't need this. I, th this is too low. I don't know what I was thinking of, but this is the lowest level right here. Because 
One, two, three. It's only supposed to be three blocks down. So I don't know where I goofed. Clearly, I goofed somewhere in my calculations. I don't know where. But it also doesn't matter too much. Because the big point is that this is where I need to be mining at. This is three blocks down. Like technically it's four, technically it is I need to mine four down. That's just because I need to replace the bottom with dirt, you know? But I do believe we have reached the bottom of what we need to dig out for this uh, castle, the moat for the moat. The only problem is, is that because there's no water, there's going to be grass generating down here. As far as I know, putting down water doesn't, um, like, remove it. So, there's going to be, some of this is going to be grass. I might wait for it all to be grass down here before I put the water down. Um, just so that I don't have some areas that are dirt and some areas that are grass. Whoops. Actually, um, Silkinator might be better because I actually need stone to build with. I'm going to need to use the stone cutter to make stuff like stone bricks. But yeah, that should do it. At least on this side. <laughs> so I have the other sides to do. Suppose these pigs are just stuck down here now. I don't think there's any way for them to get back up at this point. So we have some boat pigs. <laughs> I wonder if we can get an emote of Moat Pig. That would be great. So 
it's like a pig swimming in the moat. Uh, like as an emote. I don't know, how do, like, streamers usually decide what their emotes are? Like, I just picked, like, for now, like, I just picked random poses from FF14. But that was also when my plan was to use Lilia as, like, my streams. <laughs> Like, almost purely what I was going to be like streaming was FF14 with Lilia. And now I'm not doing that, so now I feel those emotes don't exactly work anymore. Like, if I'm going to use an emote of an FF14 character, it feels like I should use Cassandra. But, like... Do I use Makote Cassandra because that's what she always was? Or now because she's an aura, do I use that as an as emotes? You know? Or do I just scrap the idea of doing any emotes until, like, a meme comes about in my channel? And if so, like, how do I go about that? <laughs> you know? Like, will Moat Pig become a meme in the channel? You know? Like, it, it, will Moat Pig be popular enough to be a meme? I think that's generally how most Twitch people do it, is that the, like, their emotes are their, like, channel's memes. But, like, what meme, what, like, does my channel have any memes? Well, Pig better be popular. <laughs> I mean, Moat Pig definitely won't be able to leave the moat. Though I don't know if the Bedrock version, like, can make passive animals, like, despawn. So I might need to consider... Getting like a name tag for Moat Pig. I mean, I'm not going to do that immediately because right now there's like four Moat Pigs. And I'm going to have to just like pick one of them to stay down here in the moat. And like get rid of the others. Or, you know, maybe we can find a way to do like Moat Pigs instead of just moat pig because there's multiple moat pigs.
Yeah, I guess the question really is just, like, what is the most relevant thing in my streams, you know? You have a cool name like Guardian of the Moat, but then just call it Moat Pig. <laughs> I could do that. And I, like, I do have name tags. Or rather, I can get name tags. They don't currently have name tags. One, two, three. Okay. So this let. So I. It's a good thing I mined this out because I have to put dirt on that layer. I mean, I can definitely look into getting a moat pig emote. Yep. I just need to, you know, do, you know, look into it. <laughs> Right. I need to replace that anyway. <laughs> I don't think you can get up there now, but I'm putting that there anyway to block it from climbing up there again. Dirt. One, two, three. Okay, yes. This do be the correct layer for putting the dirt down. do have to mine the copper over there as well but that will come in time <laughs> one of your favorite emotes is nom Sorority 3 Nam, huh? That's another thing I need to like consider. Um, 
because Twitch rolled out a while ago, but Twitch rolled out the follower emotes. And right now, all I have is sub emotes. So I need to consider adding follower emotes so that people can go to other channels and then spam those my emotes. And people can be like, who dat? And then they see it's me. And then they'd be like, neato. Yeah, here. You're not moat pig. You're moat chicken. You're not as cool. Nobody wants you. Everybody wants moat pig. Nobody wants moat chicken. Oh, do they only work in your specific in your specific channel? That I have no idea. I know very little of the emote system that Twitch has, so. <clears throat> I just don't, I mean, I don't sub to, like, anybody to begin with. Um, but I don't, like, know anybody that I could, like, sub to. Um... Because, like, I really, I'd only want to sub to, like, friends. Um, I want to just sub to, like, you know, streamer. You know? And so, like, I don't know anybody that I would, like, sub to that also ha even has emotes. You know? All the, uh, all my friends that have, you know, affiliate don't e actually have emotes. So. So I've never, I've just never like used or, you know, anything, the, the emote system. Getting there. It's a lot of work <laughs> to mine out all of this and replace it with dirt, but we're getting there. Animated emotes. The animated emotes are look pretty cool. Um but I only have like one slot for animated emotes. I have to get two, I think it's 15 subs <clears throat> before I unlock another like set of emotes. And I think you have to like stay at it in order to keep them active. Which I think is one reason people use, like, better TTV. Because you can just, like, put as many emotes as you want on there. Um, the problem is, is that I generally keep an eye on chat through OBS. And not through Twitch itself. Um, 
you know, I rarely have the actual Twitch chat open. I usually just have the OBS. I have OBS open, and then I have the, the Twitch chat on OBS. So I rarely have the, the legitimate, like, Twitch chat itself open. So it's like, I can't use better TTV, you know? Unless I actually start, like, using the actual Twitch chat instead of the OBS Twitch chat. Ninety percent of the time you're watching on mobile. Yeah, that's the other thing is that the you know better TTV doesn't work on mobile because you're going through Twitch's like app. So it's like I I, I appreciate the idea of better TTV. You know, it's definitely a cool add-on, but it's only available on PC, and surprisingly, a large amount of people who watch Twitch watch on mobile, so I can't stand the mobile app personally, but... A lot of people watch on mobile, so. And that's another thing that kind of concerns me. Um, not with Twitch particularly, but with the video game that I'm making, I'm going, I would, I could probably get more income from the game I'm making if I made a mobile port. And RPG Maker can do that. The problem is, is that I don't have the ability to use some of the plugins that I'm using if I were to do a mobile port. <laughs> Do computers even come in like flat desktop form anymore? Or do they all come in tower form now? Cuz like that, that that was the reason it was called a desktop was cuz it was a flat like design that went on the top of your desk. But I don't know of any computers that even come like that anymore. I think they're all towers now. Which is also, in my opinion, kind of hilarious that... Because, like, I don't... I mean, I... I don't really know if there's, like, any more space or anything in a tower <coughs> versus a, 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 you know, a flat desktop. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm referring to. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, no, I'm not talking about the all-in-ones. Um, 
a long, long time ago, probably before you were even born, <laughs> um, computers used to come in uh, a long variety as opposed to the tower that they come in now. Um, and that was actually the origin of the term desktop because it was flat and it fit on your desk. And like the very fact that you don't even know what I mean when I say, you know. Flat desktop is a little sad, in my opinion, just because, like, that's what I grew up when. Yeah, they they're, they're basically looked exactly like towers, but they were sideways instead. That was how they were. That's how computers were. They were the same as towers nowadays, but they were essentially sideways. And I remember when towers were first introduced, I thought it was really funny because I'm like, ha, that computer's on its side. You know? Because towers are technically the, the ones that are sideways. <laughs> How is it sad? Just, you know, it, it, it's just the idea of like, just the, you know, it, it's just sad that people like don't know stuff, you know, some of that like really old stuff nowadays, you know? Because like, it, it's one of the, it, it's one of those I'm old things. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's so sad that people don't know, you know. This modern generation, you know, they, they don't know nothing about freaking... Oh, God, I'm really going to age myself when I say this. They don't know nothing about floppy disks. They don't know nothing about all the pain and horror that was floppy disks, man. Them things, they don't remember how bad those were. <laughs> Freaking, what was it? Eight megabytes of space? There's these tiny little metal, like flat, like, like if you look at the save icon in most programs, you know, that's based off of the floppy disk. So, they looked like that. And they were, well, they weren't metal. They were plastic. They had a metal piece on them, but they were plastic. And inside, they had a literal disc, uh, a circular, um, you know, piece of... I don't know what it was made out of, like plastic or something like that. But there was an actual, like, disc inside, you know. 
and you had to be very careful when you were handling them because they they had the little metal piece in front of them so that you couldn't touch the 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 disc that was inside of them where the data was actually stored and when, like when you put the disc in it would the the machine would slide the little metal piece out of the way and then read the data you know um but you had to be careful because you could just physically move that metal piece yourself and all it took was you know sliding that metal piece over and then touching the 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 interior disc to completely like destroy all of the data so like if you've ever used like a cd and had i'm i might be aging myself even with that if you've ever used like a cd and had issues with it like reading stuff because it like got dirty or scratched like floppy disks were super easy to like dirty and scratch as long as you know if you just move that little piece of metal over Oh, this is gravel. I really don't want flint, but oh well. Um, this must be the lair, right? One, two, three. Yeah, okay. So I dig one more down. But yeah, and before, before the, um, before the, the, they were, let's see, what were they called? Um, I think it was three and a quarter inch floppy disks. Um, there was the actual floppy disk, the, the reason that it was called a floppy disk, because it was a flimsy floppy piece of plastic that was five and a half inches like wide and it stored like one mag like barely anything on it you know it was just big enough that you could put like a sixth of a game on it back then. I'm talking like 8-bit video games. You know? You could put like a sixth of a disc on it. Or like a sixth of a, a game on it. And so you would buy video games that came on floppy disk and you would have to insert the, uh, the, the next disc like regularly. You know, insert disc number eight. <laughs> uh, I remember the old days um, playing the some of the old D&D &D video games from way back then. And it was like you, you, you took a few steps and then the game comes up and goes, please insert disc four. And then you insert disc four and then you take a few steps and then the game's like, Please insert disc five. <laughs> but like, that's how games were. And like, that, that we didn't complain because that's just how video games were. Like, how would you possibly store more data onto a disc back then? You know, that was our thought. It was like, like th these games were amazing. They're so big. They take up eight discs. You know? It was, in, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like those old days, man. Nowadays, freaking nobody even knows about that kind of stuff. 
you know. Freaking, the generation that grew up with CDs barely knows that pain. You know, there were some games that were, like, big enough that they still had to be on multiple CDs, like World of Warcraft's initial release. But then it was, like, DVDs came out, and they could store, like, an entire game on a DVD. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like, you could store so much more on a DVD than a CD. Especially if it was a dual layer DVD. And freaking current generation, you know, it's like, what's a CD? What's a DVD? Because all they know, I, I feel like people would still know what DVDs are just because movies do still come out on DVD. But like, I don't even know if games do that anymore. I think they all just come out on like Blu-ray and such. So I don't think they even... Heck, most games don't even come out physically. You have to freaking go out and just download the game, so... But... Those were the, the, the old, I don't know that I would say they're the good old days, but those were the old days of, like, being a gamer, you know? If you were a gamer back then, like, first off, you had, uh, like, boxes that had, like, 20 discs in them. Because, you know... That was gaming back then. Games were huge. But, I mean, they're tiny now. <laughs> Those games are, you know, not even 100 mag. But that was huge back then. You know? It's like, man, this game is so big. The, the days when people thought that 3D graphics in video games were going to die out and full motion video was just the way of video games. And there were so many video games where they hired like big name like Hollywood actors like Mark Hamill, for instance, to like play characters and, like, the whole game is, like, you're walking around as, like, a digitized version of, you know, the, the Hollywood actor, you know, playing the role, of course, you know. And I was like, this is the future of video games. And that fad died out pretty quickly. Unfortunately, I don't think it lasted more than like five years. Um, but that's because it was expensive, you know. Because, you know, you were hiring big name Hollywood video, you know, movie, you know, actors for these things. And so it was like, it was super expensive to hire them to play the different roles and things. And eventually people just, just realize like that's just not something that you can like do constantly. It also helped that, you know, you had the advent of things like the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation come out with their, you know, photorealistic. <laughs> that's literally, that's how they advertised it back then, by the way, was photorealistic graphics. <laughs> and like, 
But, like, we bought it because it looked so good back then. You know? Like, it looked amazing back then. I mean, think of th think of how like Final Fantasy, the original Final Fantasy VII looks. You know, if you're familiar with that at all, I just know that tends to be one of like the bigger PS One games. You know, but, like look at how that game looks. But realize that like at the time, that was unbelievably good. You know. Like, well, when when Kid Me picked up Super Mario 64 for the first time, it was like, man, Mario's never looked so good. Holy heck, you know? Because he was in 3D. And he had so many polygons. <laughs> uh, I, I just think about that. And I'm just like, jeez, man. Just like how technology has evolved in just the last 20 years, even. You know, Super Mario 64 came out in 1996. That's what, 25 years ago? But like, look at where computer video, you know, not computer, but video games, you know, graphics are today. Like we didn't even we didn't even dream of such a day. Like that that just to to look at modern video games and say that we had like any inkling that that would eventually come out. Like we, we didn't. We had no idea that that was what could be possible one day. We thought we had reached the cutting edge, that there was no way that these things could advance any further because they were already just astounding. And just, what, within 10 years of that, games were even more ridiculous. So, well, there we go. Our moat is done. I mean, it needs water, but the moat has been dug out. It just makes me wonder, like, if video games have progressed as much as they have just in these 20 years, like... What are they going to look like 20 years from now? Like, I can't even, I can't even think about that. Like, they're going to be unrecognizable from what we currently have. Like, easily. Die right. Copper, copper. Iron. Cocoa beans? Yes, I had them in there. Okay. Gunpowder? Yes, I had those in there. Okay. Um, cobblestone. And gravel and regular stone and coal. Darn it, I almost had that right. Hmm, well, that's unfortunate. I ran out of space. I guess I'll just have to put coal straight into my furnaces. I ran out of space. Like, darn, man. 
Because I'll just have to start, like, directly powering my furnaces. Because I have so much. Like, what am I going to do about this? You can tell I am so distressed. <laughs> Uh, copper was up here. More copper. Um, where is my buckets? Buckets, buckets, buckets. I should have another bucket somewhere. I should have three buckets. But I don't see a bucket anywhere. I only had this one in here. Huh. Well, that's disappointing. I don't know where, what happened to my other bucket. It's not in here anywhere. Hmm. I don't know what happened to my third bucket. Oh, well. Maybe I used it in... Uh, a recipe or something. Do you use... Do you use buckets and recipes in vanilla Minecraft? I don't even know. Look at this dripstone, though. Like, this stuff is done growing. Like, the, it's not going to grow any more than that, I don't think. Also, like, I had... <laughs> Over 50 scaffolding when I made them. And now I'm down to just eight. And I don't know where the rest of the scaffolding has gone. Always carry a bucket. Like, I legitimately have no clue where the rest of the scat. Oh my gosh, this one's also full. I forgot. Forgot that I had that much stone. <laughs> well, good. I'm going to need a lot, so. Like, that. that's a good thing that I have that much stone. I'm going to need a lot of stone for what I, for building just this castle. So, I am glad to see that I have, you know, entire barrels worth of stone in here. Like, multi-chests, you know? Because I'm going to need that. I'm going to need big stone. Um, let's see. So the first thing I need to do if I'm going to build this castle is figure out what I want to make the actual castle itself out of. Um, cause like, if I want it to look fancy, right, I should probably use, like, stone bricks for, like, the exterior, the, the exterior, I'm thinking. Um, 
but the real question is, do I want the floor to be made out of something special? Like, um, I mean, I guess I could do... Like, do I don't know if I want andesite. Maybe if there was... <coughs> Maybe if there was a brick form. I'm wondering if I should do tuft bricks. As, like, the exterior. Um... Which, obviously, they're not out yet. They probably won't be out for a few months. Um, and so it's like, I don't know if I want to wait that long to, to make the exterior of the castle. Um, there's no, like, cobblestone bricks. No gravel bricks. Um, that's really the only thing, like stone, currently stone is really the only thing I could make anything out of. Um, because it's really the only, like, brick variant that's available. Um, aside from, you know, regular bricks, of course. Um... I mean, I guess there's always, like, nether bricks. But that would make it look more like an evil castle, right? And I don't know that I want it to be, like, a dark and evil castle. I want it to just be a castle. Um. I wonder. What about Deep Slate? Uh, I can't tell from Deep Slate Tiles. Um, do I have Cobbled Deep Slate? Which is the weirdest thing that it's cobbled that you use. But it is. I could try some Deep Slate. Um... Oh, interesting. Chiseled Deep Slate. Has like a face on it. Um, yeah, I think this will work. Um, I don't suppose I can... I can't do anything with Chiseled Deep Slate. Woo! What a pain. Um, but yeah, I suppose I can. Whoops, wrong one. Suppose I can do deep slate bricks for the actual walls. And then I can do regular stone bricks. For the floor, I think. I think that looks good. I think I can do that. I think this will work well. Gonna need way more than I currently have in my inventory, of course. Um, I just didn't want to make a bunch and then put it down and decide I didn't like it, you know? So. I definitely do like the tough bricks. 
And maybe when that comes out, I might consider, you know, some possible changing in spots or just as a whole. But I think these deep slate bricks will work fine for now. Castle sheep. Just doesn't have the ring to it that Moat Pig does. <laughs> That's another thing that I feel like Mojang needs to like correct though is the inability to um, stone cutter items like back to their original forms. I think that looks pretty good. I think if I go in and I deep slate brick everything, I think it will look fine. Um, and so then what I can do is I can stone brick the actual um, like floor. So... And I'll have to, you know, work the uh, the hill here a bit to make it fit, you know, with going around the uh, the, the building. Um, but I definitely think that it's coming along, you know. I definitely think that we're getting some things figured out as far as the castle goes. So that's always a good thing. There we go. Plenty more nether wart. Like, I already like how this goes here. I think I'm going to keep all of this on this side. Um, I might kind of curve this area instead of this, like, square. Um, but I already kind of like the way that this looks. I'll probably take the path out that way a bit. And then, like, bring it around, you know... Fill in this hole and then kind of bring it around like this side and things like that. And then of course, you know, it's got the, the dirt has to come high enough that it's all the way around this because this is uh, the gatehouse. So, but I do think that it is looking really good already, you know. Um, main thing I just need to do is add the bridge on so that I can get into, <laughs> I mean, right now I'm just kind of using the freaking, um, the, the, 
The, the what's it called? <laughs> scaffolding. And right now I'm just kind of using the scaffolding to get in, right? Um, but if I bridgeify it, which I should be able to do with um, this much. And it does give me 12. So that's kind of enough. If I do some finagling. Because what I want to do with it is this. And this. But then... this so they it kind of takes a step up and then takes a step down out Break. and there we go um, I'll probably put some kind of railings on it as well. But that will probably be another time. As opposed to, you know, today. Because, I mean, one, we've been going at this for five hours. Um, so we are far into the stream. And it probably wouldn't hurt to consider the possibility of ending soon. Um, especially since I'm going to need to get something to eat here pretty soon. Um... Yeah, I was going to say, this is completely full, isn't it? Um, don't care. It can splatter everywhere for all I care. Um, main thing I need to do is pick up the chest. Or barrel, I suppose it is. Then I'll just bring it over here by the composter for now. That said, <laughs> I'm still not going to be able to carry all the, you know, store all of the bamboo. <laughs> because it was already full to begin with. On top of what I had just harvested, so. Yep. That's a lot of bamboo. Oh, maybe I should do a double chest. I'm going to make a dark oak double chest. Just because I have so much dark oak. I suppose I should probably consider making a jungle chest. Because I have so much freaking um, jungle wood. I kind of wish that they had multiple styles of chests in base Minecraft. It's one of the things that I miss from Quark is the ability to have, <coughs> you know, different chests based off of the different woods. I don't know. It, it's one of those, like, modders can do it. Why the frick can't Mojang? You know, it's literally just another texture added on. But it's also one of those, like, 
maybe Mojang just doesn't want to because... I don't know, Mojang doesn't want to do a lot of things for some reason. I mean, it's their game. You know, they can technically do whatever they want. Oh, hey, I forgot that we had cherry wood. Awesome. But also, like... I mean, there are just some things that people really badly want. That people are like bagging Mojang for, and Mojang is just, like, never happening. I'm like, okay. I mean, there are some things I understand, you know? Like, don't get me wrong, you know, it's probably a good thing that Mojang, you know, doesn't want to implement any, you know, modern or sci-fi weaponry into the game, you know? I mean, it's just, like, and this is the thing, Minecraft is a fantasy game. It doesn't matter, you know, what people think. It's a fantasy game. It would be really weird and out of place for there to be, like, sci-fi elements. Oh, hey. Hey. The dirt does go away. Cool. Hey, Mr. Moat Pig. Moat Pig is about to learn why he is named Moat Pig. <laughs> nice! I forgot it did that. But this here, it should do that all the way across now. Whoop! Very nice, very nice. So did that go all the way down? Or is this edge not done? That This edge is done. Cool. Very cool. Forgot that it would do that. Now watch as I start getting drowned that spawn in my moat. I would be so annoyed. I am glad to see though that the grass is going away. Um, that was one thing I was a little concerned about was the possibility of there just being tons and tons of, like, grass that would just be annoying. Okay, seriously? Grab the right block, please. It is dark right here. There's no torches above my head. Whee! And it all solidifies. I love that.
You know, water didn't used to work this way. It used to be much more of a pain to fill this, like, to fill in a moat like this. Because it used to need water on two opposite sides, not just on two sides of any, you know, of any sides. And so it was even more of a pain to do this. Although something that I'm a little concerned about are these large areas like this. Like when I attempt to fill this in on the second layer, is it going to cooperate? Is the question. I like how from two buckets of water, I have created an entire moat. At least I will never again have to worry about an a uh, an infinite water source. Uh, boop, and boop, and boop, and boop. It is still a pain to fill this in, though. Because, like, you know, it's pushing against me and everything. You know, I'm having to work against the current and all that. Constantly. Do, 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 do. I'm filling this in. Oh, it looks like you got that filled in already. Hi, Moat Pig. You know, that's really funny, actually. <laughs> Smoke pig just standing there on the scaffolding. You know, I could use this to my advantage. You have given me an idea, and I could use it. Now the question is, will I be able to... Raise the moat. 
up without issues. Because falling water doesn't work the same as steady water does. Like, the, the biggest issue here is going to be actually, like, getting these to become infinite water sources. Whoop! Never mind. It did it all on its own. Whoosh! Whoosh goes the water. Cool. That was way easier than it used to be. Like, this part was always way more difficult. I'm actually kind of glad to see that this has been, like, updated, if you will. Like, the water physics have kind of been updated to allow for ease. You know, we're doing this easier. It's not the easiest thing because like you're, you're, you're still getting pushed around by the current. Though I do wonder, let's come swim over here to Moat Pig. I'm going to come up here. Can I reach? I can. Okay. Just going to say, I wonder if it might be easier to do this from, like, above. Like this. It does seem like it. Whoops. This is going to be tricky, though. Frick. It's hard to see exactly where I'm, like, placing... Let it do work. Until I goof it. Maybe I can fix it by putting water there. There we go. All right. Now it'll be easier. Because I'm not taking from it and then trying to place it, you know, five blocks away. Rippity doo da. All right.
I don't know that that was that much easier, considering here I can just kind of let the water, you know, kind of push me along here. My mom is now watching Frozen. <laughs> This is actually kind of easier doing it directly in the water. The way I was doing it was not easier, but now I'm doing it correctly and it's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you, you, you floating, sir. Okay, you're llama in the, you are in the way. You're going to float down here if you stay here, sir. Hey, maybe once I bring him around to the scaffolding, maybe he'll realize he can, like, get up and out. Or not because he stopped getting pushed by the current, I realized. So, nope, he's just going to keep floating there. We all float down here, Douglas. That's a vine sauce reference, of course. Oh, I'm at the scaffolding. Cool. Now this part could be difficult because <laughs> now I have to actually do, you know, one higher. Although maybe it's just as easy that like once I get it started, it'll just work. Kind of like that was. If I keep going, Once I get over here, where both sides will be forced to touch, 
Then it'll start to spread out. And then once it hits there in those touch, then it'll spread back here. Hey, Work like a charm. Worked perfectly, band. Worked exactly as I expected it to. Still, the hard part is staying, like, above the water. Because before, I could just, like, stand. Now I can't just stand. I wonder if I could have, like, boated. And made this easier. I mean, it's too late now. To, you know, try boating. Because I'm... Well, already most of the way done. But, I do wonder if boating would have made this easier. Doing this, though, filling in, like, large swaths of water like this, used to be ridiculously hard. I'm glad to see that they have done some updates to the water physics. And made this actually much easier to do. Don't know exactly what got updated and changed. But I'm glad to see that there were some updates that made this more, like, easy to do. It is a pain to kind of stay above the water, but it's not that bad, honestly. Whoops. I pushed that one block over. One block too far over. So now another thing I can do is I can put lanterns in the moat to light up the water and make it not so dark. That will help with lighting. I'm trying to be certain that I'm taking off the top because I don't know if um taking like under the water will cause it to like source to stay source block listen you are I, I know you're trying to be cool and everything but you're just not as cool as freaking moat pig. Okay. That like that's just the way it is. Uh -huh. 
Like, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but you're not as cool as Moat Pig. Moat Trader just doesn't have the same ring to it. Doesn't matter how you, tr how much you fight it. <laughs> Moat pig. Unfortunately, Mr. Remote Pig, I have to break the scaffolding now. And there we have a moat. I assume this grass block will break now that there is, you know, source blocks everywhere. So now we have Moat Pig. And what I might do to try and, you know, convince Moat Pig to be Moat Pig is I might build him a little platform. Um, let's say right there. Trying to think of how to get these scaffolding <laughs> without going back into the moat. <laughs> Guess there really is no way. I'm just gonna have to grab them and then like get out of the moat. That way. All right, so I do have a lead. Thanks to the wandering trader that was there. So let's come around and find our moat pig. Since he loves to stand on the scaffolding. And he's working real hard to try and get up here, let me tell you. So now let's take him on our lead. And we'll bring him over. Whoops, I didn't mean to fall in. Rip, I'm going to have to do get myself out again. And now we bring him over here to his little platform. And we hope that he climbs up there. Come on, get on the scaffolding. You can do it. <laughs> Moat Pig does not want to be Moat Pig, apparently. I do this. 
Will that convince him to go over to the scaffolding? Yes, it did. Maybe? Nope. He left the scaffolding. I think the problem now is that the water is too high. So his AI says like, oh, I might be able to jump. And so like he's actually trying to jump out of the water now instead of just climbing up onto the scaffolding like he did before. I need to like convince him to get onto the scaffolding and then up. So I wonder if I can by doing this. Since now he will have more block space. Come on, milk pig. Ah! Fell in the water. I built you this nice little platform. Maybe I need to build him an actual platform. And that could actually be fun. Build him like an actual platform under there. Let me... I'll probably change the material later. Let me get just a, a handful of cobblestone here. Hey, look, I got 13. <laughs> Now we'll see if he, like, views that as a platform that he can get up onto. If he does, hopefully he will then stay up here. And we can, like, widen the platform a little bit so that he's a little more visible. I don't know where the other pig went, but this pig is now on the moat, and that's what matters. It is now in the moat, and that's what matters. He very clearly thinks that he can get up onto this slab, and if I built one block over, he definitely could. Um... I wonder if I could build the platform over here and then put two pigs in. Let me do that. Let me build his platform over a bit more. So that he's not pathfinding to the slabs continuously and trying to like jump up. Because he very clearly is pathfinding to those slabs. I wonder if it might not even be best to use slabs here for his platform. Um, we'll leave two gap over there. I'm 
then we'll break some blocks. Yeah, you can definitely see he's pathing to those slabs. But if he can't path to those slabs, let's say because he's over here instead of being over there, And let's say there are no blocks over there for him to path to. <laughs> A little five by five platform for Milk Pig. Um, let's be nice to him and that is not the silk touch. Two more. There we go. Because these will grow outward. So let's be nice to him. And do a little bit of this. Over there, buddy. Nothing bad better happen to you. There. Now he's got some nice grass. Because this will eventually spread out. And then what I can do is I can use my silk touch to pick up two more grass. Along with another eight dirt. And then we'll come over here. And in the same position, I hope this is the same spot. Let's see. One, there's four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. Yes. So one, two, three, four. Which it does appear that is is the case here. No, no bedrock put placing in front of me thing. Do I not smoke chicken? You know, there used to be two pigs, but I think one of them got out when I had the scaffolding. 
I saw one of them climb on top of the scaffolding. So I think one of them managed to actually, like, escape. So. Um. So. Let's go grab another pig. Here's our, here's a piggy, piggy, pig, pig. In fact, this might be the other moat pig. And let's bring him to the moat. Come on, piggy, piggy. Hey, yeah, that pig's staying on there. Piggy, you will drown if you stay there. Watching pigs stay under the dirt going, you're going to drown. Hey, we got moat pigs. Moat pig, woo. Get it? Because, you know, I can... Um, DuckTales, DuckTales woo, DuckTales woohoo. This is Moat Pig Woohoo. <laughs> anyway. Moat Pigs! Ow. Breaking my ankles by doing that. Over and over again. Oh, I really don't want to, but I do need to repair my tools. And by I don't want to, I mean I really don't want to run around and collect all of this, but I do need to repair my tools. So I might as well repair, you know, do this to repair my tools and by the name tags both at the same time. Make it easier on myself. these would just continue to grow until I break them like why is there an arbitrary three block limit you know why can't I have sky high sugar cane that's what I want to do just want sky high sugar cane <laughs> you know give me some apotheosis here
See, and the problem is, is that this area isn't chunk loaded. Way the heck out here. Like, this is, this is from earlier. When I came through here before. Like, none of this is chunk loaded. So it doesn't grow unless I'm over here. It really sucks. Then as soon as we get into the area where, you know, stuff has been loaded. And we get back into this. Where it's three high. This is why I like island bases. Because you can essentially just put the sugar cane all the way around the island. And then you just run around and freaking, you know, collect a bunch of it. And if this was modded, there would be chunk loaders so that you could, so that this stuff was always loaded. I mean, if this was modded, these things would be freaking sky high to begin with. Like, could you imagine if that was available and then you had one of these? And by these, I mean like the, this, this level of sugarcane growth going. And it's all the way around the island. And it can go up into the sky. Like, I would have so much sugar cane. I would need a backpack. To be able to make, to like hold all of this. Like all of the sugar cane all at once. And paper. Nice. Very nice. So much sugarcane. Slowly my sugarcane empire grows even further. Because not only do I have this much in the way of paper, but I have a, so much sugarcane stored as well. So... The sugarcane empire grows. And I always sit here and click trade a million times. I don't know why there's no like fast trade button like in Java. Like, in Java, you just like hit Shift V and it like trades and restocks. But you can't do that here for reasons.
I need you to move. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Whoops. Wait, where did the one that I was just trading with go? Because their trades weren't over. Oh, you have real little... Did you just raise your price? While I, like... No, you didn't. Okay, I think it's this one that I was trading with. I thought they rose, raised their freaking price on me. <gasps> oh, no, I think they'd only do that when they ha actually restock. Do you not have freaking there we go. Thank you. Two name tags. That's what I'm after. And then we will name both of them Guardian of the Moat. Mm, actually, we'll do Moat Guardian. Then we'll name tag them both. And hopefully they'll stay there. And hopefully not drown at some point. <laughs> because they do dumb things or whatever. Seem to be, they, they seem to stick to the land. Because, like, ooh, this is land, you know? So they seem to kind of stick there. So, at least there's that. Mumboat Guardians. Oh, if I hit F1, it hides the name, too, so I can't. I was going to F1 and hide the UI and then take a picture. But I can't do that. What? What do you want? Hmm? You can come up here all you want. You don't have to ask. Alrighty, well, it is now uh, 10.30, and I think we have done a lot today in the stream. We got two moat pigs. We built the outline of our castle. Um, you know, I've just got to get Lots of deep slate to uh to, to build it, you know. Boy, yeah, if you fall in there, that's just that. There's no getting out. Um, so yeah, I'll have to go in and replace all of the cobblestone with deep slate bricks at some point. I don't know if it will be off stream or not. Um, just cause, hey, <laughs> remember what I said about where are my lava buckets <laughs> or my, uh, m well, just buckets, but still remember me asking about where are my buckets? As it turns out, I forgot. I not only, um, like set this up, but I added two buckets of lava here in case I wanted to, you know, fill this machine up again. And I promptly forgot that I did that. So there's that. Um, I think I will just grab all of the copper that we have.
Nah, this should be enough. I mean, I've already got some extra to begin with, right? So, easily enough in there. Then we will throw our lava buckets in here to get them started again. We have so much iron and so much copper in there. It's ridiculous, and I love it. Um, I'm going to put these in here so I don't forget next time. But, uh, yeah, we have an enchanting tower that I started and still haven't touched in, like, five streams. Um, we have a castle that we've now started, and hopefully I will, you know, work on. Unlike our poor enchanting tower. Problem with the enchanting tower is that the, the model that I'm using requires modded blocks. And I'm not sure what to replace them with, so I just haven't touched it since. The castle, on the other hand, is a vanilla structure. And so I should just be able to build it with vanilla blocks without issue. So, um, but yeah, I think this is a good spot for us to wind things down. Don't mind if I do just a little bit of nether wart trading before I fully end off the stream. Just because we have a lot. Um, but, like, look at how much nether wart there is. Uh, if you have enjoyed, though, I'm not even gonna be, I'm not even gonna be able to sell, like, half of this nether wart because I've only got just the one cleric, so. Hey, there's three blocks of scaffolding over here. So there's three of my missing blocks. I don't know where the others are. Cleric, cleric, cleric. Um, but yeah, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. If you have... That's all the emeralds I'm carrying. Got it. If you have, then feel free to subscribe. Um, if you're over on YouTube, that is. Um, if you are on YouTube, then feel free to come on out. Twitch.tv slash Serene Inc. Where these are streamed live. You can watch the action, I guess. <laughs> If you want to call it action, um, you, you can watch it as it happens, hang out with us, chat with us, all of that. Um, nice, yeah. That gave me, uh, that, that got rid of a good few stacks, so cool. Um, we are at 10 eyes of, or, well, 10 ender, eyes of ender. Um... Whatever they call Ender Pearls. We're at 10. Um, I could easily get us to 12. And then it's just getting the blazes, really. Um, but we could consider going to the end soon. And fighting a uh, dragon. Which would be fun. So... I was just looking things over is all. Just ensuring that I've got everything I want to have. Actually, shears are where? I just, rem just remembered my freaking... 
Um, bees. Seriously, where are the shears? Here they are. Look like a lot of other things, I guess. I'm gonna handle my bees so that I can hopefully get what I need left out of them. Then we can start to, you know, stocking up on honeycomb from that. Why? You're being smoked. I don't understand. They are being smoked. This makes no sense. Why are they angry? I mean, you're going to die anyway, Mr. B, so... These two bees going to die anyway because they stung me. I don't understand why. Why are they angry? Like, that makes no sense. They're literally smoke particles. Well, they're definitely being smoked now. There's no two ways about it. Yeah, it is counting them as being smoked now. I don't know. I guess trapdoors just make it so that they don't count as being smoked. Despite the smoke particles. That's really annoying. Because I just lost like four bees out of that. So, bees. Well, that's annoying. Apparently you can't just take one at a time, like in Java. There, I've replaced the bees that, for no reason, freaking attacked me. Because despite the fact that they were in fact being smoked, they still attacked me. So, I don't know. So, whatever. I don't care, I guess. I mean, I kind of do, because that was weird and ridiculous. And, like, what the frick? But it's also whatever, I guess. <laughs> Need, what, four more of these? One more. That's exactly what I was after. Then let's see if I can. I realized that, you know, I said, like, I'm going like half an hour ago. Um, not half an hour ago, but like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> but I'm going to do this and then I'll end the stream. So once again, I hope that you all did enjoy. I know I have enjoyed so far. So, it's been fun. 
Meow. I only needed three, apparently. Oh well. It is what it is. Meow. Meow. What? What can I do for you, kitty cat? Um, I was hoping that I could, you know, freaking, uh, do, do, do the thing. <laughs> um, but they're not out. None of the bees are out, so. Um, what was that? I'll see you all next time. Hey, just in time, all of you. It wasn't all the bees, was it? The four that I put down? Because those four came out all together. So that has me a little concerned. That that was, because like, that shouldn't have been all the bees. Maybe those four all just came out together because they were the four I placed. And they just happened to finish and the others came out and went back in. In that length, in the length of time. Probably. It does look like there are plenty more bees, so. All right. Well. Go ahead and uh, grab that honeycomb for our copper blocks. And we'll leave it there. I might pull these down. If that would work if I just pulled them down to like floor level. Bet you that would just make things make my life easier hmm. Don't think that one has bees in it. <laughs> but I'm using it from my inventory. Just in case. Second like I thought that had a trap door. I was like, I thought I picked up all the trap doors. I think I did. Right, fire. There we go. So I'm pretty sure that even though there's a smoke particles going up here, I'm pretty sure these, this one is not being smoked, <laughs> which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is, I guess. Also, did I just make it dark in here because I covered up all the campfires? Oh dear. Bob's better not freaking spawn in here and kill my freaking bees. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. You could try to test it. Um, I mean, yeah. I 
I don't think there's any bees in it though to like test whether it's whether they'll get angry or not, like if it's being smoked or not. So, and I'm also just not too concerned either. Wait, I only need one of each of the, whatever. I'll make 12, or 16, whatever. However many torches this makes. Yeah, 16. Make 16, I'll just put four down. Sorry, I know I should be, like, hopping off. <laughs> like I've said bye many times. I just keep, like, thinking, like, well, I, well the, what, there's one other thing I need to do to fix something, you know? So, like, I'm just going to do this, basically, where I put one light in each. Well, I already had a light there. But yeah, I have one light in each of those spots now, so. So it shall no longer, I think it was lit up fine then, because I had this torch that I forgot about. It would have been fine. It's, oh well. Yeah, I don't know if there's any bees in this one. I don't think there's any bees in this one. Because they didn't get angry at me. Cool. So yeah, there's no bees in that one. I was pretty sure that was the one that didn't have bees in it, so. And those just finished, too. Cool. Well, if I decide to expand the farm, I have that in there, so. Alright, <clears throat> this time for real. Because I actually, like, need to get off at this point and go do some stuff, so. I will see you all next time. Bye.